Precisa ferir a pressão, medir a glicemia ou tomar uma vacina? Na Drogazil tem exames, testes e calendário vacinal completo. E o que é melhor, tem sempre uma Drogazil aí perto de você. É fácil, prático e rápido. Dá para ir entre uma música e outra. Procure nossos farmacêuticos. Quanto mais você conhece o que a gente faz na Drogazil, mais você se cuida. Empire. Hello and welcome to my podcast. Do me a favor, subscribe to the John Carmen Report wherever you get your podcast. You're watching on YouTube, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. You can find us there as part of Empire Media, A-M-P-I-R-E. Always much appreciated when you tune in and don't forget you can read my work on ESPN.com also. And if you're watching on YouTube right now, you can see Bram Weinstein, the voice of the commanders here. You can check out his show on the Empire Media YouTube page as well. And the Ben, Stan- ben Standig has a show on Empire. Bram, you're getting everybody on Empire. Building an empire with empire. I like that. So and we're building it up. You know, I think, you, um, you know, I, I, when we first started talking about this and you were really one of the first people I started talking to about doing this with me pre-pandemic, you know, I, yeah. you know, I wanted to build up really what I thought was a really strong vertical around DC sports that would focus a lot, obviously on the commanders. And we're finally kind of getting there. Yeah. And, um, you know, I'm very excited that my radio station ESPN 630 allowed me to own and produce the show. I've wanted to do that for a long time. So, um, you know, I'll do what you do wherever you get your podcasts, the Bram Weinstein show. You, you there you go. There you go. And again, my work on ESPN.com. And so I have a story up now from after the game about Jaden Daniels performance. I'm sure you are familiar with what Jaden Daniels did the other day. Yeah. Um, and so, and I'll have another story up later this week. Think on the old line. We'll see. Working on some other stuff that's going to be fun later on down the road, some of which involves Jaden Daniels. A lot of fun stuff coming, Bram. Anyways, let's talk about the game because I, I babbled on for a while after the game. But mm-hmm. I am curious what your perspective is on the game now. You've had a day to process it. What is What jumps out at you the most when you look back on that? Uh, I thought they were very competitive. Um, we've talked about this a little bit privately and publicly that I haven't seen a lot of, and this is just modern NFL practices because a lot of it's been negotiated out in a CBA. There just isn't a lot of like hitting going on in practices. So I just kind of didn't know what kind of aggressive team we're going to get. I mean, they keep telling us they're going to be this really aggressive team. And I assume that they will be, but I just haven't seen it. So this was our first, like, I was like walking into this game going, this could be the first time it's a full go. First time. And I wanted to see what that looked like. I thought they were very aggressive. Um, If we could have that first quarter like 58 times during the regular season, that would be great um, off of what Jaden did on the limited series and off of the way the, you know, the portions of the starting defense that actually suited up and played. I thought that was pretty good. Um, But, you know, like I've already rewatched it. And I'll be honest with you, like there were some really great moments. Obviously, we can talk about Jaden and what he did. Um, There were great moments. But I think largely there's a lot here to work on, like a lot. And, you know, it is a preseason game, but, um, you know, the the issues with the offensive line reared up if you really rewatch it. Oh, yeah, and sure. I, I'm, I'm willing to, like, be very careful about being too critical because I know how many people did not play. So they just haven't had their group. Um, but if you really kind of take a closer look at it, um, the offensive line was problematic for sure. Well, we can stay there because that is an issue. And I, we will get to Jaden Daniels because, I mean, his development and growth mean everything here. But there's two things with the O-line. First of all, I thought Cliff Kingsbury called a good game given what they had on that front and not putting him in position to, you know, sit there, hold the ball, go through read after read after read. But my concern, too, is, first of all, I don't think they have any depth of tackle beyond the top three. But they also haven't worked together, Bram. So what are you what's your big concern with that group? Yeah, I mean, like I want to be fair here because like Chris Paul was playing right tackle. Right. Like that's that's not fair. That you know, not. like I, I don't I don't care how he did well or not well. Like it's just not fair because he he hasn't played that position. Right. <laughs> you know, like so I just want to be, you know, I want to be fair about all of this. Um, I agree with you. I think like we weren't sure about their frontline starters, let alone the depth. So we we've had, you know, the other day at the New York practice. You know, I felt like it was kind of a bust because there were so many people missing and I'd put so much stock in it 
that I really wanted to see how would this line compete against the jet starters. Right. And we just didn't get that because of injuries from Coleman Wiley. They're being careful with Lucas. They were very careful with him the other day. I don't blame them at this point. So it's, I think it's really hard to judge it. Um, but I will say this, like of the starting group, you know, like Nick Allegretti had a penalty and a couple of bad misses, you know, yeah. and, and some decent work, but a couple of bad misses. And so he's one of the starters for them. Yeah. Um, you know, like the backups and granted, some of them have been here a few days because of attrition right. got beat pretty badly by backups of the jets. So I, I just think like on the whole, um, the offensive line remains a concern to me, but until I see who they think their group is going to be. And I, I know they are really dying to turn the lights on Brandon Coleman to see what it looks like in a preseason game. And I really hope that happens against the dolphins um, until we get to that. It's hard for me to really make a judgment, but I will say like from a depth perspective, um, you, you, there's concern, obviously. Right. And I think that's my concern too. And you're right. Like Mason Brooks also is not a tackle. Chris Paul is not a tackle. I'm not sure Trent Scott is either, but that's his position. So that's, that's part of the concern. Right. And, you know, but the bigger concern I have is getting that first group time together because I think the interior could be solid with Biotish, Cosme, and Allegretti, but you're right, Allegretti had a couple, you know, not so great plays, but um, I do think they can be solid, but you've got to see them together, and that's my concern, is can you, do you have, how much time do you need to build that cohesion yeah. to become a good group that's productive right away, but I also, then Bram, I'm going to go back to play calling and the quarterback, because again, like, the play calling matched what they had, and um, they took into account what they had, I felt, right? And if he does that, I think if you continue that, there's going to be sometimes going to be an issue. But if you do that, you can mitigate some of those issues. But I still have concerns about where they're at because we just haven't seen them together as a full group. Yeah, I think for a first go, I agree with you on Kingsbury. I was very impressed. I mean, you know, we were set up for they really don't want to show a lot because, you know, they know right. they have this advantage in the early part of the season because nobody really knows what their offense is going to look like. So they're going to be careful. Um, and to your point about, I think he knew what he had in front of him and he wanted to be careful. There were three separate drives with three different quarterbacks that he opened with a play action rollout to try to like allow the quarterback, right. I think to get out of the pocket and right. help him a little bit. And it really, to me was, was not like them trying to necessarily, call plays but i think just get everybody comfortable and not feel some kind of rush early right. um because i think the protection was in jeopardy i loved the sprint option call i thought that was amazing in the fourth quarter that led to the wiley touchdown um and i will say this too overall i think all not mariota because he didn't play very much but the three quarterbacks if Jaden had a great drive obviously um, and I thought the quarterback play on the whole was actually very good. I agree. And if you really go back and watch it, you see the disruptiveness of what happened with the offensive line just in general. I thought the three quarterbacks that played prominently played all like together, all played really well. So I want to credit Kingsbury and Tavita and those guys as well. I thought on the whole, the quarterback play was very strong for a first preseason game. And I think because of what we're talking about with the line, it's not like they were under siege all night. There were pressures and there were issues, but I felt like the quarterbacks did a good job of knowing what they needed to do and when and yep. getting rid of the ball. Like that's how that's how you can help a line look better. So you can make the stats look better. Like even on the deep ball that Daniels threw, I think it was Chris Paul at tackle was beat. Didn't matter because you because the, the ball you hit your plant step, the ball's out. So like there are ways to lessen a guy getting beat but you still want to see it better. But again, it's not that I don't think that the starting group can do something. It's that we just haven't seen it. And like, Correct. you want to see Coleman next to Allegretti because they need to build up the communication and seeing like, okay, we can talk about this in the classroom, but I need to see how, I need to see how Brandon Coleman's going to react to this kind of a stunt. So I know then how to play it myself. Right. Yep. And I think Allegretti and Biotish were working some of that stuff out during the Jets uh, practice as well so those are the things that you that you need to see and how do you get there if the guys aren't out there that's tough yeah, yeah I agree so I think the offensive line to me was concerning and rewatching, right. obviously um and I, I I went in you know just going God, I hope they protect because I knew what the situation was going to be going in with all the people moving around and, and jumping around uh quarterback play was very good 
I am very happy for Deami Brown. I'm very happy for him. Like he has had a really good camp. He has shown up a lot. He gets name checked a lot. He made an outstanding play on that third down throw from Jaden. He made another really good catch later in the half. And like, he's one of those guys, he's a carryover. We're not seeing many of those left here. Um, I think that they have tough choices at the bottom of the receiving core to get to 53 to make, but he has more than made a case that he should be here. And the way he's performed, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if he starts getting more prominent opportunities as camp progresses, even into the regular season, because he's shown the propensity to make the type of plays that got him drafted as high as he was in the first place. So I'm actually really, he's had a long road to get to this point. I'm, I'm actually very happy for him that it's like kind of coming together in this offense for him. So let's stay there because to me, part of the equation there is he wasn't exactly wide open on that play. Nope. Quarterback throws it. That's a big deal. So yep. I think, and and what I also liked, and I brought this up on the podcast of the game, but I'm curious. Check to him too, John, like check to him. So if you're Deami Brown, how does that make you feel that they check to that and then he drops in a dime when you're covered? Yeah, no, it was great. I mean, like I really, I'm just, I'm happy for him. Like he clearly, like I, I've been saying this all camp. I'm like, I want to see one more go with him because I think he's got, you know, a level of talent that's higher than the average player. And I don't want to just give up on people. And I know he just hasn't had a lot of opportunity. And then, you know, all of a sudden he's really kind of popped off in camp for them. And he's made catches like this in camp. And then all of a sudden he makes one of them in a game like this. And he had another one. I'm just, I'm just happy for him. Like we had the one to practice trust too. him. He's building a relationship with Daniels. Frankly, we've talked a lot about like, who's the number three or a trusted target on the outside. It might be him, you know, as things kind of emerge here. So I'm like, I'm happy for him. Well, I don't know who would be ahead of him for the number three spot at this point. Nobody. Yeah. Nobody. It's, it's, it's not McCaffrey. No. No, and then like Zacchaeus is a slot receiver who right. he's had a terrific camp, and I think they love him. I like him. I like him. Yeah, yeah. He's He'll he's help. a pro. Um, and you know how they use Dotson is going to be interesting. I want to like I don't think they want to show us what they're going to do with him, but we're going to have to see. But I think Diami, the storyline of Diami, like his time running out here, uh, hold the phone on that. Like I I think well, I think we're seeing him kind of rise up the depth charts immediately here to someone who goes from that will just only make the team. But at this juncture, I would assume that he'd have a lot of plays out on the field with the starting offense. It sounds like he's your front runner for offensive MVP in the NFC. Am I, am I, am I going too far? Uh, if he has the kind of year we're talking about here, the, the uh, like overreaction on August 11th, uh, <laughs> then number five is going to be the uh, number five is going to be in the pro bowl that if that's what happens, but I do like, so to that, to, to the point though, and this incorporates Daniels as well is, a quarterback willing to take those deep shots consistently, even when the guy's not wide open. Like again, he was not open, but he gave him room to make the throw and he drops in a perfect throw. So I think, you know, that isn't all that hasn't always been going on where they want guys like, even if this guy's covered, you've got to give him a chance. And I think that's what I like that Daniels did. I think that was a mature throw. And I think that maybe that stems from, he threw that ball a ton at LSU, like that same route but I also think he's like, you know, give your guys a chance. And I think yeah. that's good quarterback play. No, I mean, we've seen it in practice a couple of times too, yeah. when they've had the, you know, the faux ish pass rush, he knows he's not going to get hit, but like, and he's put the ball down the field effortlessly where it's supposed to be. Give a guy a play. I, I referenced this a couple of weeks, a week and a half ago. Now the one to McLaurin that really, I was like, okay, like these are the things that if he started, I think I said it at the time I go, if he does this in the games, he's going to end up in the pro bowl. And that was your first glimpse of it, you know? And it was the first time he was in a third down situation. First time he did it. Like now, again, um, that wasn't Sauce Gardner or G DJ Reed covering right. him. Okay. Right. You know, that wasn't Quinn and Williams, you know, out there chasing him. The Jets didn't play their guys, right. but I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, downplay what happened. I think that was a really big deal. And John, I know you weren't at the game, but this is the first time I saw this, the smile on Daniel's face oh. in his press conference. And I got to do a post-game interview for the broadcast with him. Just, it was like, he was so genuinely happy, I think, to get it over with, um, to put all that stuff behind him. And that he, that he knows that even in a limited amount of time, he did a couple things that like were great. Um, and he's left, you only get one chance at a first impression. That was a great one. He knows he did it. Just the look on his face was 
It was pure relief and joy. And I, it was really nice to see that as well. And you saw that after the, the play, the throw to Diami too. And, but that's who he is. Like I remember talking to Herm Edwards about this back in the spring or winter, just how when he had him at, at Arizona State, he'd make a bad play and the guy was still smiling, not because he's happy he made a bad play, but because he's like, don't worry, coach, I got it, right? But he just has fun playing football. And that becomes so infectious for guys. And it's funny that you, I say that, you know this, like not everybody on who's out there loves playing football. It's just that that's what they're good at. Yeah. And what they have to do. There's a, there's a number, there is certainly a number of guys who do love it, but he's one of them. And when you love it, it, you can max out when you yeah. have. Yeah. And I just kind of, I don't know, you know, I, I don't want to speak for him or get into his head or anything because, you know, they've been very careful about giving us a lot of access to him really in general right. throughout this entire process. I don't really feel like I know him very well at this point, but the read I get on him is like the, the work ethics there and he's very humble to start with, but he's put his head down and he's been grinding and working and working and grinding and grinding. And the coaches keep, you know, referencing like he is moving along at a really rapid pace because he's doing the work to do it. And this was the reward of it. Like it was the first opportunity to have a reward of it. And I think it was a relief for him. And it certainly was a relief for all of us that are sitting there going, is he the guy? Is he the guy? Is he the guy? And that's not going to be proven in one series in preseason game number one. But again, you get one chance at a first impression and the first impression is going to leave a lasting one because that was, that throw was amazing. And then just how effortless the third and goal run was for him. It just, he'd been there before. Like it is. So it was, it's great to see, you know, like obviously there's so much that we're pinning hope on him. And for a first go in a very short period of time, he's lived up to everything. I think we thought he would be. For the entire month of August, the Adventure Park at Sandy Spring is offering multiple ways to save on climbing and zip lining and 50% off axe throwing. There are only a few Sundays left without football, so it's time to get that last summer adventure on the schedule. There's no better place to spend the last few days and nights of the summer with friends and family. Don't just take our word for it. The Adventure Park at Sandy Spring was named the number one aerial adventure park in North America by USA Today. Anytime you're thinking about reaching new heights, make sure you know before you go. The Adventure Park at Sandy Spring is the only ACCT accredited park in Maryland or Virginia. So there you have it, folks. For the rest of the summer, you can get the best climbing, zip lining, and axe throwing in the country up to 50% off right here in the DMV. Reserve your adventure today at www.theadventurepark.com slash kind. Going back to that throw, and yes, it's not against Sauce Gardner or, or Reed or whatever, the coverage was really tight. It was. The throw was perfect. So the coverage is going to affect the receiver more because whether it's Sauce Gardner or Reed, and that, if you're that tight and you drop in a dime like that, there's nothing they can do. Now, maybe you can't make the throw in a game because they – they completely taken them out, but the throw is the throw. Like the throw is not a, affected by, oh, it's Gardner, so I can make a better yeah. throw. The throw is perfect. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so, and, you know, I think even in that play, I go back to Kingsbury, and I know this was a check to this, right? But it, you hit your plant step and you go, and I like how he throws a safety with his eyes. He does this in college. It's, it's just a continuation of that, a mature quarterback play. But it's like plant step, balls out. So yeah. even if you're facing that front, you know, there was pressure on coming from the outside, yeah. but the ball's out. Yeah. And I mean, like, again, I don't want to undersell it. I think it was a big deal. And I think it was great. You know, it was really great. Um, but like, you know, there was a rookie quarterback for the Jets that made two throws just like that <laughs> later in the game that helped them win. So, you know, like you just, I, I just want to be careful. It's a small subset. It just was a really sure. good first impression. It's just, it's just, it's what we have to go on. That's but right. I think what the other part of that brand is to me, it's a continuation of what we've heard and seen, right? So we've heard all the works ethic and all that and the, the studying and all that. Then you see an example of that in the first game. And we knew about the downfield accuracy. You see example of that in the first one, right? So it's a, it is a tiny sample size. But we already know, like, you know, some of this stuff has been building. And I'd be curious to see how it, is, how it looks against, you know, Miami's defense. But are they going to even play the starters, right? And, right. you know, I, I don't know. And, um, you know, so it may not be until with the season opener that we see. I mean, we, 
But here's the other thing. We're not going to know how they're going to really use them until then. That's either. Right. We don't, we really don't. Um, but again, like, you know, I know that the coaches don't want to say this and, and they're not going to suggest that like that was a bust on Thursday, but the weather, the injuries, it just, it was like for some of the things that you, you would have hoped to have gotten out of it. I'm hoping we get better weather and a, a close to the full arsenal of the offensive line, because the same thing is going to happen here. Like I'm expecting Jaden and the quote unquote starters to take a big chunk of that Thursday practice against Miami. And then the game is going to probably be a similar amount of playing time. So it's a big deal. Like I want to, I'm hoping we get to like, see what we're, you know, what we think we're going to see against Tampa Bay in that Thursday practice in Miami. And we'll learn more this week. If those guys on the offensive line are going to be available or not. Right. That to me is a big deal. So any, what other impressions, because we, you know, we talk, we can talk about Jaden all day long, but, defensively did anything st- Sam was still Luvu both very yes. active uh, what's, both, di- what's it out yes. to you um you know like I want to go back to like one of the original points we were talking about like the they've talked about we're going to bring it in the aggressiveness on defense and you know you know in fairness like we didn't have John Allen or Deron Payne playing you know so like we didn't have our guy full arsenal of guys out there Wagner. but Luvu in a small amount of time was blowing people up Sam was still moved like a bullet um, there was gang tackling early in the game, the first quarter where the majority of the players who were probably going to make the team, you know, the prominent amount of players that were out there, they held the Jets to six yards. And that's Tyrod Taylor, okay? Like, that's not nobody, all right? That's Tyrod Taylor. Hey, I know Garrett Wilson. Tyrod was an MVP in one game last year against these guys. Right? Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, that was a real quarterback. I mean, I know he didn't have Garrett Wilson or Brees Hall and all that stuff. By the way, that Wisconsin running back looks outrageously yes. good. Like, yeah. like outrageous. Him yes, and wow. Brees Hall is a combo. That's wow. nasty. Uh, but that was Tyrod Taylor, and the defense was moving the way we thought they would move. There were a couple of missed plays along the way, but outside of that, um, I like the aggressiveness. I like the push up front. Luvu and Sanders still really stood out there. So, and again, in a very small subset, um, what they promised we'd see, we saw, you know, for a quarter, and then things you know, flipped around on them once all the other players came in. But overall, I, I felt relatively good about how the defense played. Uh, how about quarterback play? Uh, you know, I'm worried about Forbes. I mean, I'd just be honest about it. I'm like worried about him. Yep. Um, you know, I've I've been waiting for fluidity in competition the way there has been at the offensive line at the corner position because I thought it would be more open than it appeared through the first couple of weeks. I think we're going to get it now. Um I think this week, this past week and this week are very important for him. I thought it'd be a really good test in the practice to get Garrett Wilson and next week Tyreek Hill or Jalen Waddle or whoever they put on him and Tua, assuming that they're going to take part at least in the practice. Um, and I think it's a big deal. Um, I'm I'm concerned. You know, I, I'm I'm I don't know any other way to put it other than to say I'm concerned with him right now. Um, I do think they have other options if they don't want to prominently display him at this point. I think Michael Davis could play. I think Benjamin St. Juice probably would start. I think in the middle of the field, Igbenogany and Sandra still are a pretty good pairing. I wouldn't be shocked if one of those two gets some looks on the outside at some point now. That's what I, that'd be my guess. That's, one of those two be- get a little more looks on the outside. Um, but I'm worried about Forbes. I, get, I don't, I don't know any other way to put it really. Yeah, than, and I know. think... The key is, and I brought this up into the game too, Igbenogany has done a nice job in the slide. Did a good job. Igbenogany, John. Igbenogany. Igbenogany. I keep botching it. Sorry. Igbenogany. Yeah. Igbenogany. Igbenogany has done a nice job in the slot. Yeah. That's why, because they have confidence in Igbenogany, they can then maybe attempt to use and see what Sam still can do on the outside. Because yeah, I, Igbenogany, I, I, it'd be Igbenogany, interesting to see, yeah. you know, they're going to start shutting down practice pretty soon. So I don't know if we're going to know right. what they're doing, but like I, I, that, that scenario to me feels actually likely to test run a little bit. Yes. I mean, and part of it to me is Sam we're still is a competitor. I just want guys who are going to compete out there. And I'm not saying Forbes necessarily isn't, but if you're going to move somebody out, if you're going to, if you got to that point where you're like, it's just not working, then you're going to put someone who's just like, I know this guy's going to compete out there. And yeah. then, then you got to, you know, then you got to do it. Otherwise, then you have to switch it up a little bit or find another alternative. But and da- or maybe Davis can do it. So if if they don't feel he can, then so there there are some. I don't know that they're Sam is still is better in the slot. That's where you want him. Like I love how he moves in there. He's very smart inside there. 
Um, but he's a guy that's very adaptable. So we'll yeah, I, I mean, as it stands right now, I would expect against Tampa that either Mike Davis or Benjamin St. Juice is on Mike Evans that that Forbes wouldn't be. Um, and then we'll we'll see where it goes from there. I yeah. mean, I know they love what Saber still does in the middle of the field as a slot corner. Um, but you know, you got to work with what you got to work with. This is we not unlike when we talked about the offensive line. We knew coming in here this could be a weakness for them, right. and so we'll just have to see how that plays out. But right now. Um, I'm concerned about what role he could have on the team. So we'll, we'll just have to, we'll have to see. Yeah. Is that, and like St. Juice, I think has been fine in camp. I don't have, I think, you know, he got Wilson got him the other day. Wilson's one of the best receivers in the league. All right. But the, the problem for Forbes is if he doesn't help you as a starter, he doesn't do anything that's going to help you on special teams either. You know what I mean? Like he's got a play to do it and you got to be making yep. plays to do it. Hey, it's Bram Weinstein here, voice of the commanders, and of course, frequent guest of this podcast, The John Kime Report. I wanted to let you all know that my show, which airs at 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. on ESPN 630, is now exclusively produced by Empire Media, my company, and is going to be distributed through our network. So I'm asking you, please, if you subscribe to this show and love this show, give mine a try as well. Subscribe to The Bram Weinstein Show wherever you get your podcasts. And many of the shows and many of the elements that are in the show will be available on the Empire Media YouTube channel. We're going to talk a ton of commanders and other DC sports. Check it out. Last thing, any other final thoughts from takeaway from that game that you're uh, looking forward to seeing as we move forward? Yeah. Um, uh, so I think the story's getting rewritten on Jamin Davis. Like, not unlike Deami Brown a little bit, but Deami Brown didn't get asked to change his positions. Jamin Davis did. Mm -hmm. um, I've had an opportunity to talk to a lot of people about him. And, you know, we talked about this here, and I think people just started crunching numbers and not seeing a big impact on the edge. And you start going, is this guy even going to make the team? And... As it turns out, I think internally they view his progression at this way differently than yeah. people on the outside do. Um, secondarily, like they gave him a lot of run. Like he played a lot yeah, of snaps lot. yesterday. I think, and I think they feel like they need it. I've been told they're like, he is all in for this. Like yeah. he's not reluctant whatsoever about it. Like he wants to do it. He's been all in about it. They know what kind of athlete he is, and the coaches appreciate that, and they're willing to kind of move along with him. And while he learns, because he doesn't really have any pass rush moves, like this is an all new thing all that wrong. he's doing. But there were moments where he was strong against the run the other day, Powerful. which I know they're looking at him going, could he actually be a three down rush end for them? And I think that's a big time open question. But as a situational rusher or someone who is perceived as valuable for some kind of role for them. I think he's way more on solid ground than I think we thought even a week ago. Agreed. And that's, I think, got confirmed by his play yesterday. So agreed. I would say, um, Jamin Davis, if there was a storyline that was like, I don't know if he's going to make it, I think we could put that to bed for now. Like, I, I not only I think he's going to make it, I actually think that there might even be a more prominent style role if they figure out what he's best at. They keep talking about that. We're going to figure out what he's best at. And I think they are going to do that. And so I, I feel very differently. I'm happy for him and I'm happy for Diami. The carryovers that seem to have kind of gotten through this wave and stood out and are going to be people that are going to perform for this new coaching staff. And still got to see it in the season. We all know yeah. that, but good start right. for them. I would say my last word on Davis would be um, played with a lot of power against the run. He was struck hard. He's very raw. It's a pass rush. You can see he's got to develop a plan. He's got to develop, you know, just better instincts for that. That takes time. But I also I keep saying you don't get rid of size and speed. And there are times where you see him use that speed when he's moving laterally to chase guys down that I think jumps out to them. So I think you know, you know, that that you know that you say about it, um, if he and this is a big if, if he really develops and becomes a player who basically kind of turns his career into becoming this, whether it's here or other places, Ryan Kerrigan is going to look like a great, great football coach because he is, <laughs> it's a big part of what's happening right now. With For him. sure. And then the other last thing I want to see is Johnny Newton. When, what's what's the schedule look yep. like for him this week to see when he gets out there? Because you have 
Like the same thing with Coleman, like they need to get these guys on the field, especially Coleman, because he's going to have a prominent role possibly early if he can get back out there. But it, is it, are you able to do that if he doesn't get back out there? It's day to day, week to week. We'll see. Anyways, Bram, thanks for joining me. For everybody listening, thanks for tuning in. I will be back. I've been doing a daily practice report, but they don't practice until two o'clock on Monday. It's a shell practice. Unless something big happens, the next time you're going to hear from me is after the Tuesday practice, which goes back to the regular time at 9 a.m. And that one is in pads. So anyway, folks, again, if there's big news on Monday, if there's anything worthwhile talking about, I'll do it. If not, I'll talk to you Tuesday. I'll talk to you next time.